Greetings, I'm Shad, and I have another question. And the reason why I'm putting this question out here to you guys on YouTube is because the last question I asked had such a phenomenal response. And honestly, guys, it really helped me out. And just to follow up on the last question I asked in regards to swept hilts versus cross guards, um, you guys really helped me come to a conclusion. And my conclusion is, is that Swept hilts are going to be far more common in the world setting of the book I'm currently working on uh, than crossed hilt, you know, cross guards. The answer really was fairly unanimous in regards to cross guards being the thing. And if you're wondering what the question is, and you know, you know, you haven't watched the previous video, well, you can watch the previous video to understand what I'm talking about. But yeah, I've come to that as well. So in my book setting, even though shields, gauntlets, bucklers, daggers are very common in the world, even when people are using shields, I've come to the decision for my book and in that setting that people will still more predominantly use swords that have swept hilts over cross guards again even when using shields. So you will already know what my new question is by the title of this video. How magic can or should affect the law of conservation of energy. This is really interesting. I'm going to give you the background as to why I'm thinking about this because that's just what I do. I'm a rambler. Hope you enjoy. As you know I'm currently working on a book and I've just finished my writing session today. And in the writing session, I came to one of the parts in the book where the magic is used to enhance my main character's abilities and other things like that. And uh, he can use it to decrease and increase his weight. And I have been using that as a means for him to make these incredibly big superhero-like jumps and leaps across buildings and things like that. And I had to pause and wonder if I might be making a big mistake because I could be contradicting the law of conservation of energy. You see, a good magic system is a magic system that has rules. And once you establish those rules, you need to be very consistent. If you say this can be achieved with that magic, you then need to be consistent with what it can achieve. Otherwise, it's a big plot hole. And movies are the worst culprits in this because so often they will show the a character doing something with magic that could be really useful in a later parts in the story and then they never use them. Like the Disney movie Maleficent and she's a character who is magical, has got all these magical abilities. And there's this one part where she's using telekinetic powers to throw people up around, crashing together and stuff like that. And then at the end of the movie, she's not using it at all. It's just stupid. And somehow, when she gets her wings and she can fly, suddenly she's more powerful than she was. She was using more magic when she didn't have her wings when she did. It's stupid. It's not making sense. And so I try to be very aware of those plot holes and those mistakes when you're dealing with magic in regards to a story. Rules. Establish the rules and be consistent with those rules. And if you're going to say you should look up Brandon Sanderson's Laws of Magic, well, Brandon Sanderson's like my mentor. Trust me, this is all coming from, you know, Sanderson's Laws of Magic. I mean, it is just phenomenal stuff. If you're interested in writing, using magic in whatever, role-playing, story writing, anything, you should look it up. You see, because the next part in establishing rules and then being consistent with those rules is then try to trying to be realistic on how this unrealistic magical thing, whatever it is, how that, if it did exist, would realistically operate under true physical laws. And this is a lot of fun because if you do this right, it can make the story and the magic seem really realistic. And that's the goal that you want. And so I want to try and understand how this particular part of my magic system would affect the certain, you know, laws of physics. So now looking at the magic specifically, okay, um, I'm not going to go into all the detail of what the magic system is and what it can do. I'll just be applying it to this specific, you know, circumstance. And that is part of the magic can be used to reduce a person's weight and also increase a person's weight to fairly large degrees, okay? And so it can make someone, like, to the fullest extent, be as light as a feather. And to the other end, it can make someone, you know, heavier than a tank, okay? So there's those two big extremes course the ones who are going to be able to help me out with this question most are people who understand physics or have a background in it but even if you don't have a background in physics or understand it or just understand it very basically like I do that doesn't mean that you won't enjoy thinking about the question now according to my very basic understanding of the law of conserva conservation of energy is if you jumped and were flying through the air and suddenly your weight increased your momentum and velocity would 
reduce very sharply because in a closed system the energy you can't create new energy out of nowhere and you can't suck it out into nothing energy is always consistent the thing is though in a jump the enhanced or increased weight isn't being created or in the system itself it's actually being fed into the system and so that means energy is actually being added in through the magic and so if that's the case i assume that the person's or you know the objects whatever it is its velocity wouldn't then decrease or would it help me out all right this is you know this is what i need the help on see there's a lot of things to try and figure out this is what i've this is the thought that i've had and i want to double check if it would work this way or not so this is again where i need your help so how i have it at the moment the way that this character enables himself to do these incredibly big leaps through using a magic system is that at the very moment before he jumps he reduces his weight to as almost as light as a feather and so all that energy and strength that his muscles and body can produce is then of course can be have a far greater effect at, in the speed in which it can um reach when that the leap or jump is just initially done now as soon as you jump there's going to be a lot of forces that will try and slow you down for instance wind resistance uh, and especially if you weigh that light uh the wind can slow you down quite far and you wouldn't jump very far at all if you're just reducing your weight the next thing that i have him do the very moment he leaves the ground and is at his highest like you know highest speed he increases his weight to a huge level now if this was in a closed system i would understand it that that would almost bring him to a standstill he'll jump and if his weight is suddenly increased that would make him stop my thought is that by feeding in new energy through the magic and so the power source of the magic is being funneled in to have a supernatural effect to increase his weight all right and therefore more energy is being fed into the system and because of that i'm i'm trying i'm thinking could that work that way that his speed would then not be reduced now if that is the case if his speed is not reduced there is a set amount of energy and mass in that system and then if his weight reduces to normal okay if he stops feeding the energy in i would guess that that energy would then be transferred into momentum meaning that the leap would just be huge you see because when the character stops um uh, transferring you know the magic through him to increase his weight the magic isn't taking the weight back out all right the weight was there and then when it stops meaning his weight would naturally return to normal the energy can't disappear that was there due to his mass remember classic e equals mc square energy and mass is equivalent and so therefore if the mass disappears there was still a, you know potential energy from that mass in the system so that's why i think it would then transfer into momentum now i don't think that would increase his speed okay i don't know it, it might help me out physicists but if it doesn't increase his speed it would maintain the velocity or speed that he initially achieved from the jump when he was so light because if increasing his weight doesn't slow him down it means he was moving at a pretty high speed at a very high mass as well or would it have a completely different effect would there be far less inertia being played upon him if he has far less mass now meaning it would take far less it would take far less energy for him to be slowed down i'm just not smart enough to figure out exactly what would happen so this is what i do have currently happening in the book and please fill me in on the things that i might be getting wrong so he goes ready for a jump decreases his weight to near zero he jumps at the very instant he jumps and is at his highest speed he increases his mass okay and i'm assuming then if the mass is coming through an external source it's energy being fed into the system if he then met, re, makes his weight return to normal or even reduces his weight to half its natural level so would that would that have a big effect on him jumping further or would just keeping his weight the same have the same effect in him jumping you know very very far because if he had far greater mass and he is able to make that mass at the level once he is at that high speed it would take far more energy to slow him down purely because of inertia and so would i then keep his weight at the heavy level once he's achieved that velocity at that weight i hope that makes sense like i don't think it does because 
I'm having trouble making sense of it because I'm not a physicist. I can't wait to, you know, read some of your thoughts on this. And if any of you who are watching this do have a un better understanding of physics than me, please explain it to me. Can't wait to read your comments. Thank you for watching. And until next time, or indeed my next question, happy thinking.